Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, sharing some new revelations from the book of Revelation chapter 12. This is a follow-up to a class we did yesterday, and thanks to a number of viewers and their comments, we got even more understanding out of what we're reading in Revelation chapter 12. And so in this class, we're going to try to make a little more concise video. We're even going to use a little bit better recording tool. And we're going to try to quickly go down through here and let you know exactly what happened back there in 2017 with the Revelations 12 sign in the sky and what it means to our life. And at the end, we're even going to talk about the 1,260 days and what that date is actually pointing to. So if you would be prepared to leave comments as we go, please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so, and please share this video as it should be packed with vital information that a lot of people will need to see. And go ahead and hit that like button if you haven't done so already. It's easier to remember to do it now than at the end of the video. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna look in Revelation chapter 12 at verse one. It says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of seven stars. Now, I have bet you've seen this star alignment several times in the past, but I know there may be some who haven't. So let's briefly understand what that was that John was talking about in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. Now, he said it was a wonder that appeared in heaven, and that heaven that he is talking about in this verse is actually the sky. He was talking about a star constellation. He was actually talking about the alignment of certain planets and star constellations that made up this event. You see right here the star constellation that's known as the Virgin. And alongside this star constellation, you have the sun, which is about her midsection. This would be how she is clothed with the sun. And you see the moon, which is down there by her feet. And above her head, you see the constellation of the lion. Now, anytime you are able to look up in the sky, you will see these two constellations aligned in this manner, where you have the virgin, with the lion above our head. But what unique happened on September the 23rd, 2017, is you had these other planets that came into the picture, which when added to the constellation of the lion equals 10 stars above her head. So looking back at Revelation in chapter 12, you see that that's what's actually occurred on September of 2017. The virgin clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head were 12 stars. I believe I mistakenly said 10 stars, but if you count them, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This event has only happened on September of 2017 in all of human history and will never happen again. But anyway, let's go to verse 2. It says, And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. Now to get a Old Testament reference for this travailing with child, we can come over to the book of Jeremiah in chapter 30. You see in verse 6 that it's all about a man like a woman travailing with child. Well, when you look down in verse 7, you see that what it's actually talking about is Jacob's trouble. This is talking about the great tribulation that we hear about in the end times. In other words, our father gave us this sign in the sky as a marker for the beginning of the tribulation. Now, don't be confused about the tribulation and the great tribulation. When you look over in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10, you see that ye shall have 10 days of tribulation or 10 years of trouble. 
So it's not necessarily talking about the Great Tribulation, which would be a shorter period of time, maybe like seven years, or the Apocalypse, which could be even shorter, like three years. All that to say that 2017 was not an end like most people thought it was at the time. It was pointing to a beginning. So let's look over at verse 3, which says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. Now, we are talking about a different star constellation. But before I show you which one it is, I need to make sure you understand what a dragon is. As far as the Bible is concerned, it's talking about a serpent, as you see here in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 2, where it says, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. This is talking about that angel that came down from heaven, and we're going to see more on him here in a second. I find it necessary to make that distinction because there are, are many who will argue that that dragon constellation that's being spoken of is the constellation Draco, which you see is standing before the woman, but there are a lot of other constellations standing between Draco and Virgo. And notice that Draco is actually facing away from the woman. Whereas Serpents, which is another dragon constellation, is also standing before the woman and he actually has the crown above his head. Whereas Draco does not have the crown above his head, he has this whole other constellation standing above his head. Now, I'm not saying that those guys are wrong because... A lot of them are smarter than I am when it comes to astronomy. And there are several dragon slash snake constellations in the heavens. But the one that John was talking about actually fits better with this one right here. If you understand what it's talking about when it says the dragon. What that's talking about is the snake constellation. Some call it serpents. Here you see the head of the snake and here you see the body of the snake. And if you count the stars that make up the head, you'll see that there's actually seven of them. Here he is again and you see that the serpent constellation or serpents is actually part of two constellations that are put together. There's the head, there's the body. But notice this in the middle here. These two constellations together form what's known as Ophiuchus. So we see the serpent or the dragon must have a head that's made up of seven stars. But then it says that he also has ten horns. We see these ten horns in the constellation called Bootes. You see here on a wikipedia.org webpage on the constellation Bootes that it is known as the dragon's horn or the great horn. And you see in the star constellation that it actually has 10 stars. So when you look back at the constellations, there you see the serpent's constellation with Bootes, which is the horn above his head, all standing before the woman. So that's what verse 3 is talking about. So then we need to find the seven crowns or the seven stars above his head. Now what I'm going to show you here in a second is that this crown that is being talked about is the star constellation called Corona Borealis. You see how it has seven stars that makes up this crown? So now let's look at verse 4. It says, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Alright, next, let's jump down to verse 5, 
out of chapter 12. It says, and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was called up unto God and to his throne. But notice that it's not saying that this will be visualized in the star alignments. Like verse 6, which says, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Verse 5 and verse 6 aren't shown in the heavens. But verse 7 is, you see where it says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. So if we come back over to Stellarium, we can see this war taking place. That star constellation that we have been talking about as serpents is actually part of a larger star constellation called Ophiuchus. And you can see by the art drawn here that Ophiuchus is fighting against the serpent. That's what verse 7 is saying when it says, and there was a war in heaven. So that what we see illustrated in the star constellations is Michael fighting against the dragon, allowing us to see the complete picture of Revelation chapters 12 verses 1 through 7. So what does this all mean? Is this just twinkling stars up in the heavens that most of us missed, weren't able to see at all because we didn't have stellarium or high powered telescopes or even knew what we were looking at if we did have those things? Or was this a message that our father was sending to us? Well, to help us understand what that all meant, we have to jump over to the third testament of the Bible. First, we'll come over to chapter 20, which is about Mary and the maternal love of God. If we start here at verse 53 out of chapter 20, we can see the story that our father illustrated by way of those star constellations. It says, My disciple John, the prophet and seer, beheld in his ecstasy a woman dressed in the sun, a radiant virgin of light. Of course, he's talking about that virgin constellation made up of twinkling lights that we call stars. Verse 54 says that woman, that virgin, is Mary, whose womb will once again conceive, not a new redeemer, but a world of men who sustain themselves by her love, faith, and humility. So this is that child that which she was given birth to, not the Messiah all over again, not a new redeemer. But a world of men and women, of course, who sustain themselves by her love, faith and humility in order to follow the divine footsteps of Christ, the master of all perfection. We learn in chapter 20 of this book that Mary was the incarnation of the Holy Spirit, just like the Messiah was the incarnation of the word of God. And John the Baptist was the incarnation of the spirit of Elijah. So that's what it's talking about here where it says a world of men who sustain themselves in her love, faith and humility is talking about the love, faith and humility of the Holy Spirit or the spirit of God. And this new type of person whom many of us are counted in that number will follow the divine footsteps of Christ, the master of all perfection. Verse 55 says, The prophet saw how that woman suffered as though to give birth, and the pain was that of the purification of man and the expiation of spirits. And like you remember, we jumped over and looked at Jeremiah in chapter 30 as it was talking about travailing with birth and then going in and talking about Jacob's trouble well if you watch the classes that we've been putting out recently you understand that it is the tribulation that will purify Jacob turning him into Israel just like the story back there in Genesis after Jacob finishes wrestling with the angel 
his name was changed and he was transformed into Israel. You see right there, it says, when the pain has passed, the light will be made in man and gladness shall fill the spirit of your universal mother. So this is referring to after the tribulation, when we enter what's known as the kingdom age or the millennial age, when our father will have the reign over the planet. So when we hear about those birth pains and the woman travailing with birth is actually pointing to the purification process that we know as the tribulation. Now, to get further understanding on that Revelation 12 sign in the sky, let's jump down to chapter 63, which is teachings for the congregations and all the disciples of Christ. We'll look here at verse 298. It says, Behold, that your most powerful enemy you carry is within yourselves. When you have conquered it, you will behold under your feet the dragon with seven heads, which the Apostle Paul spoke. So understanding that that child that was being born is us, we also understand that that dragon that's standing there to devour the trial is an enemy that dwells within us. Have you ever heard them say we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principality and powers? It is those powers that we have to conquer. And when we have done so, we will recognize them as that dragon under our feet with seven heads. And to help you to understand who that dragon is that dwells within us, I'm going to bring you over to chapter 57 of the Third Testament of the Bible, where 35 says that we must fight against the dragon of evil whose weapons are ambition Hatred, earthly power, lust, vanity, selfishness, lies, idolatry, and fanaticism. That's repeated over in the Shepherd of Hermas in similar to 9, where the powers are listed as perfidiciousness, incontinence, infidelity, and pleasure, along with sadness, malice, lust, anger, lying, foolishness, pride, and hatred. You see, most of these overlap. But this is who makes up that dragon that dwells inside of us. Back over here in chapter 63 of the Third Testament of the Bible, verse 298 again says, When you have conquered it, talking about those passions, you will behold under your feet the dragon with seven heads of which the apostle John spoke. It will be then when you can truly say, I can raise my face to my Lord to say to him, Father, I will follow you, for then it will not be your lips saying it, but your spirit. That is what Revelation chapter 5 is talking about when it says her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. It never was the intention for our father to go anywhere other than to a place where we could have a relationship with him. And that place is separated from those wicked powers that control man. So then if you're paying particularly close attention, you may be saying, OK, well, what about those stars that were cast down to the earth? Well, the Third Testament covers this as well in chapter 64, which is called Prophecies. You see right there in verse 38, it says, My elements shall be unleashed and desolate the lands. This is talking about the apocalypse. It says, The men of science will discover a new planet, and a rain of stars will illuminate your world. Now, this you might have heard about people talking about Nibiru or Planet X that's prophesied that there will be the appearance of a new planet and it will decimate the earth. Well, that's what it's talking about here when it says the men of science will discover a new planet. And what Revelation chapter 4 and verse 12 is talking about is right here when it says, And a rain of stars will illuminate your world. And by illuminate, it means bringing us into the understanding. 
But I'm sure that's clear when it goes on to say, but this will not bring disasters to humanity, but only announce to men the coming of a new era. In other words, when we see this reign of stars that's talked about over there in verse 4 of Revelation in chapter 12, that's going to be the wake up call for many of us to know that we are now in the apocalypse. I believe that's what's being talked about over there in Revelation and chapter 8 and verse 7, where it's talking about the trumpets and how when the first angel sounded, there followed hell and fire mingled with blood. I believe this hell and fire mingled with blood is the same as that rain of stars over there. That trumpet blast will be the beginning of the great apocalypse. But if you're wondering when that all is to take place, let's jump back over and let's continue our study in Revelation in chapter 12. Looking at verse 6, it says, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. So let's pay a little bit closer attention to these verses 5 through 7 in Revelation chapter 12. You see right there in verse 6 where it says that this child, who we know now as us, was called up unto God and to his throne. Now, of course, we're talking a spiritual called up because if you remember in 2017, nobody physically left the planet in a rapture type scenario. But what did happen in 2017 is that many people... I mean, a lot of people started keeping the feast days and the Sabbath days, the laws and the commandments, which is what it means when it says caught up unto God. Whereas before, many of these people were worldly people. Beginning in 2017, a lot of them started the process of becoming spiritualized. That's why you have in verse 6 where it says, And the woman fled into the wilderness. This should remind you of the Exodus story where the children of Israel were carried into the wilderness by way of the eagle's wings that you read about in Exodus chapter 19 and verse 4 as well as Deuteronomy 32 and verse 11. From a materialistic standpoint, it appears as though they walked into the desert but how it's described in the scripture is that they were flown into the wilderness. And you see back over in verse 6 and he says that there has a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. So putting these verses together we see that this one thousand two hundred and three score days would have started after we had been caught up unto God or after we had started keeping the feast days. That should help clear up the misunderstanding about September the 23rd 2017 because it actually fell after the memorial of blowing of trumpets which started on the evening of September the 20th. This makes it clear that the 1,260 days didn't actually start on September the 23rd, 2017. We would have been caught up only after we had completed the eight-day celebration known as the Feast of Tabernacles. So if we start the 1,260 days on the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles, known as Shemini Ashtoreth, or Simchat Torah, which refers to the annual reading of the law, and we add 1,260 days from that time in which we would have been caught up, you end up on March the 26th of the year 2021. And on the Enoch calendar, this would be Nisan 13, which of course, Passover starts on the evening of Nisan and 13. But even if we started on September the 23rd, 2017, that would take us to March the 6th of the year 2021. 
which would be the earliest that we could expect to see the end of the 1,260 days. But I personally believe that that time is pointing to Passover of the year 2021. But before I let you go, let me show you this image that was sent to me without any text whatsoever. It's talking about that planet that we were referring to earlier that the scientists will discover and it will cause a rain of stars to pelt our planet. This apparently is coming from a YouTube channel called Planet 7X. I haven't had much time to look at their studies, but I thought this diagram was pretty interesting in how it shows this fiery red dragon planet known as Planet X or Planet Nibiru circling the sun and coming close to our planet in or about March of the year 2021. I don't know how he came up with this information, but if it's at all correct, this supports what we have been talking about at the end of the 1260 days and the stars falling from heaven to illuminate our world. I don't know how true this diagram is. He claims it to be only an estimation of time, but I would like to know what information he based that estimation on. In the meantime, I'll go over and check out his channel, see if I can find out where he's getting this idea from. And if I find out anything significant, we'll do a future video talking more about it. In this video, I think we thoroughly covered by way of the Third Testament what all that was to represent out there in the stars. And feel free to look for a link to the Third Testament in the description of this video. And if you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Leave us a comment either way. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, share this video, and may peace be unto you.